friends and welcome to a new weekly reading vlog. So today is Monday, Monday the 6th of December and I am 50 pages away from finishing Fury Born by Cleo Legrand and oh I don't know what I said in last week's vlog when I was wrapping it up but like I'm loving this okay. So I didn't I got to a certain part last night because I kept reading it last night. I didn't think I would, but then I got in the reading mood and I honestly would have finished this last night if I wasn't so tired. I wanted to keep reading, but like my eyes were starting to close and I was just, I was exhausted, but I'm loving this. So <laughs> there's like a twist and I don't even know if you can call it a twist really because it's not, <sighs> I feel like, so Oh my goodness, I don't know how to explain this, but Claire Legrand did this thing where she tells us at the beginning, like she gives us this information at the beginning, but we have no context. And then later on in the story, we find out what it means. And I'm like, holy shit, like this is brilliant. And I can't, obviously I'm being very vague because I don't want to give spoilers away. But this is so good. Like besides just the plot itself, the characters, which I'm loving, um, I really loved really love Eliana. I love Riel as well, but like they're not, they're definitely like morally gray characters, right? And I don't necessarily agree with every decision they're making, but I understand it. And I really like them, both of them. I like the characters. I like the plot. I love this world that we're in and the setting, but the structure, the way Claire Legrand structured this novel is brilliant it's just it's it's just, just kiss i don't know why i did it like that that was so weird anyway i'm loving this and i'm 50 pages from the end i'm right here and i'm gonna finish it and i'm so sad <laughs> um i'm sad because i want it to keep going and i know like this is the first book in a trilogy right and all the books are out so in theory i, I could pick up the second book right now and read it which is what i want to do but I, I can't because I need to focus on my backlist and getting through all of these books that I have to read before the end of the year. So yes, but I'm going to finish it now. It's kind of late in the day. It's 1.40. Um, I haven't eaten anything all day, so I need to do that. I need to eat something. I need to take my vitamins. I need to drink some freaking water. Jesus Christ. I don't know what's going on with me today, but like I just woke up and started working. I woke up. Um, took the kids to school, you know, did all that stuff, came home, drank a little bit of tea and just went right to work. So I edited my vlog for last week, got that uploaded, it's up right now. Um, and then I filmed a video just now. I was gonna film two videos, but honestly, I'm feeling really tired. <laughs> Not like physically tired, just like tired of talking and filming, you know what I mean? So I think I'm gonna film the other video I needed to film tomorrow instead of today. Um, yeah, so I edited, uploaded a video, I filmed a video, took my husband to his dentist appointment, I started laundry, I got myself put together today, <laughs> um, and did a bit of reading. So now I only have 50 pages left of this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make myself probably another cup of tea. I'm going to get something to eat. I need to eat some lunch, take my vitamins. And I'm gonna finish the last 50 pages of this and then I'll come back with an update and let, what, 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 what? Why are you whining? Oh, little whiny over here. I'm not giving her enough attention. I'm never giving her enough attention. Oh, I know. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Anyway, yes, I'm going to go do those things. I'm going to read the last 50 pages and then I'm going to come back to you with an update and then we're going to decide what to read next because I have no idea what to, where to go from here. But yeah, I'll catch up with you later. I finished Fury Born by Claire Legrand. I gave it five stars. I loved this. Um, I think I pretty much said everything I needed to say about it. I love the characters. I love the world. I love the magic. I love the twist. There was another twist that came like, what? I did not see that coming. Um, yes, I, oh, I am so excited to continue on with the series, but I can't do it now. But yeah, I loved this. I can't believe I waited so long. <laughs> I waited so long to read this, but honestly, I think I enjoyed it 
all the more for that. I feel like when I picked this up, everyone was reading it. Probably had higher expectations of this at the time that I picked it up and now that it's been so many years, my expectations weren't as high. You know what I mean? So I went into this with medium expectations and I loved it. I loved it. Like the last hundred pages of this was just like so tense, so tense. And I was, I cried. I might've gotten footage of me just like crying because <laughs> there was a scene that was, oh, I loved it. I loved it. So um, moving right along, that's my fourth book down for the month and today's the sixth. I don't have a plan for catching up but I'm gonna read this today because I have the audiobook for it and the audiobook is eight hours long which means four hours on two times speed. And I usually listen on two times speed so I should be able to get this one done today. I'll just be one book behind but I'm sure I can figure out a way to catch up later. But yeah I'm gonna I think what I'm gonna do is just like alternate between short um, YA and some of the bigger stuff that I have on my TBR. The Girl the Sea Gave Back by Adrienne Young. This is not a sequel to, but set in the same world as Sky in the Deep, and I already see the connection. So I have started listening to the audiobook, not very far in. Um, I just started, I just needed something to listen to while I was waiting in the car at school to pick up my kids. Um, and I picked up the audiobook for this because um, I finished Fury Born right before I left to pick up the kids. But yeah, this takes place in the same world. We're following, it's like a Viking inspired world setting. Um, the main character in here, it seems like there's two main characters. But the male, the main female character is Tova and she is part of this specific clan but when she was a little girl she died. Okay, this is all like the first chapter, so no spoilers. Um, she died and we enter the story at her funeral as her mother is tearfully putting her into the boat to be sent off and then, you know, set on fire. You know how they do. And then later on, a different clan, a man from a different clan finds her in this boat and she's alive. And the boat looks like it's been burnt, but there she is, she's fine. And so, apparently she came back to life interesting magic tova is a what do they call it uh, a truth tongue so she has the ability to cast runes and know the future so it's um seems like it'll be interesting so far and like i said there is another perspective um a male perspective halivard halivard i don't know where he comes into it but that's what I'm reading today. I'm so happy about Fury Born. Like I'm still in my feels. I don't know. It's gonna be hard to like not think about it and focus on something else, but I will try. Hello my friends, happy Wednesday. So I've read some things since I last spoke to you. I think I last spoke to you on Monday night and I told you I was going to read uh, The Girl the Sea Gave Back by Adrian Young. I got about 25% of the way through this and decided to DNF it, unfortunately. I just, it's been so long since I've read uh, Sky in the Deep, which was her first book. And this is like a companion novel to that. So we're following one of the characters from that book, a few of the characters from that book actually. And it's been so long since I've read Sky in the Deep that I didn't remember these characters. So I'm not really invested in the characters and I just wasn't interested. The 25% that I read, I wasn't interested. It was one of those things where I could see where this was going to end up. I could see how the ending was gonna happen. And I just, I just didn't care, unfortunately, which makes me sad. Such a beautiful cover too. I think this is gonna end up going in the ever-growing unhaul pile. But I instead decided to pick up, kind of on a whim, Trader's Blade by Sebastian D. Castell. So I've talked about this before, but I have a very interesting relationship with Sebastian because I read the um, Spellslinger series, not all of it, I DNF'd it actually. I loved the first book, it was so good. It's his YA series. And then the series just went downhill from book one. So I eventually gave up, but knew that I wanted to read this because I've heard so many good things and I thought maybe his adult work will work better for me. And I was right. I love this. I'm not done yet. I'm at the very end. 
I'm right here. <laughs> so I only have a tiny bit left. I'm gonna finish it now, but I'm really, really enjoying this. There's definitely some of the things that annoy me with his typical writing and his writing style, but I'll talk about that once I finish it up. So this is about our main character, Falcio. Falcio and his friends Kest and Brasti, they are great coats. Great co coats are traveling magisters. They travel the land, uphold the king's law, and bring justice to the common people. Um, they are very well respected, loyal to their king and to the law, honorable men and women. At least they were, um, because the dukes ended up overthrowing the king, they killed him, and now the great coats are scattered among the land trying to fulfill the king's last wishes. And so we're following Valkyo with his two friends as they try to do just that to um, fulfill the king's final wish, his, this one last mission that he sent them on, and they, they meet up with a lot. Uh, a lot gets thrown in their way, I guess I'll say. So that that's what this is about. It's really fun so far. I mean, I'm nearly at the end now. It's been a ride. I loved it. Very excited to finish it out, which I'm gonna do now, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. But yeah, I ended up picking this one up instead. Ooh, I am shiny. <laughs> um, but I finished Traitor's Blade by Sebastian D. Castell. I loved this. I gave it five stars. Oh my goodness. Um, so, Definitely, like, the issues that I had with the author's writing in the past, I still have now. Um, where are my notes? I have to take notes for everything these days because I can't remember anything. So, there's um, this way, I, I wouldn't say it's like breaking up the fourth wall, but it kind of feels that way because the, the narrator, the character who's narrating the story, is talking to you, the reader and will um, explain things to you or say you probably think that such and such is going to happen but n you know stuff like that that annoys me and i don't know why but it just does it annoys me in any story i read um and there was definitely a lot of that in here and i find that sebastian de castell's writing in general is kind of repetitive like we'll get to a certain point in the story maybe after the, every few chapters or so maybe every five or ten chapters where the narrate where the character sums up the story so thus far you know what I mean like we, we we fought trolls and we went through the forest and I don't know whatever and just like a summary of everything that's happened so far and now this and like I don't <laughs> that annoys me too I don't know why but it does and it happens it makes it feel a little repetitive because it happens several times throughout the story where the character is just summing up everything that has previously happened. And I'm like, dude, I know. I was I was there with you. Like we were we were in this together. So those are things that annoy me about his writing in general that were definitely present in this story. But I feel like every time you pick up a novel by this author, you're just in for a ridiculously good time. And that's what it was. It was just one thing after another, one stone after another thrown into their path. And it was just, come here. Ooh. <coughs> oh no. Okay, there you go. I'm waiting for the bubbles. Okay. It definitely did not take long for these characters to grow on me, especially our main character, Falcio. Um, he's been through a lot. Get, seeing his journey in this book, um, it was very interesting. It was it was sad. It was emotional. I cried at one point. Just like it was beautiful and like the friendship between Falcio, Brasti, and Kest. I love all of them, especially Kest. Um, I I don't know. I just I had a great time with this, and I gave it five stars. Very excited to continue on in the series. I did listen to this on audio, and the narrator Joe Jamison is incredible love the narrator it was great i loved it so yay <laughs> so glad i finally read that book since january of this year i i've been putting that on tbrs so i've been saying i'm going to read it and i finally got to it in december but better late than never right um so now so when i went to go pick up the kids from school and i was waiting in the car line i decided to pick up another audiobook and i decided to go for cinderella is dead by kaylin bayron um 
how far in am I? I think I read the first four chapters. Yeah, I'm in the middle of chapter five, so I'm somewhere in there. Um, and that's fine so far. So this takes place 200 years after the Cinderella story. It says, now, the synopsis says, now teen girls are required to appear at the annual ball where the men of the kingdom will select wives based on a girl's display of finery. If a suitable match is not found, the girls not chosen are never heard from again. And the main character we're following, Sophia, doesn't want this for herself. She does not want to go to the ball. She does not want to have a man choose her. She wants to have control over her own life. Plus, she doesn't like men. She likes women. And she's in love with her best friend, Erin. So the story has just started, so I don't know what is happening yet, but it's fine. It's fine so far. Good morning. It's Thursday. Please excuse my face. <laughs> I just woke up. I wanted to update you because I finished Cinderella is Dead last night and I actually really enjoyed this. So um, I think I already told you what this is about. Women have absolutely no rights. No rights. Um, they're basically just props for their men. Every year there's this ball and the women are paraded in front of the men at this ball and they have and the men choose a wife um women have no say in this and so she goes to the ball things happen at the ball and she runs away she runs away and she runs into um the last living descendant of cinderella's family and finds out that the the cinderella story was all wrong and then she sets about trying to take down this corrupt system like i said i definitely liked it I at first felt like I felt it was a little bit too preachy. Um, it definitely wasn't subtle and I had to remind myself that this is literally written for teenagers. So like, okay. It lost its way in the middle of the book. Like I, I don't want to say that it like meandered or lost focus on the plot because I think we were still focused on the plot the entire time, but like it just went wild in the middle and took a, a turn that I wasn't expecting it to take. We did get to see the fairy godmother in here but really the fairy godmother is just an old witch with this crow familiar who lives in a little cabin in the woods um with her cauldron and her herbs and her magic potions i loved that part honestly that was one of my favorite parts of the book was them discovering her and learning about her and uh i mean that all went up in flames but i really liked that part and the ending was very very strong i really loved the ending i liked i really liked sophia as a main character I liked Constance, who is the love interest, um, and it was a it was a great time. I liked the writing. I ended up giving it a four out of five stars. I'm very happy that I read it. So yeah, I have absolutely no idea what to read next. Okay, I have decided what I'm going to read, and I actually just filmed a video. I'm not very happy with it though. I don't know if I'm gonna end up posting it. I have to see. I feel weird today. And I feel like that's coming across. And I tried to film the video and I just like kept stopping and starting and pausing and like not knowing what to say. It was weird. I've decided to read Chosen Ones by Veronica Roth. I read the first chapter and there's like an article in front and I read the article, the first chapter. I'm already hooked. Enjoying this very much. I didn't realize that this was set in like our world for some reason i thought it was a different fantasy world because chosen ones but it actually takes place in our world um in chicago five chosen ones that defeated the dark one um when they were teenagers i think it was and then now they've grown up with how much it captured my attention in just the first chapter i think that i'm gonna really enjoy it and hopefully get through it quickly. I decided I'm going to listen to the audiobook for The Mysterious Affair at Styles by Agatha Christie. So I had planned, I think it was last year, I had planned to start my read through Agatha Christie. I read a ton of Agatha Christie books when I was a teenager and in my very early 20s and I know that I like missed a lot of them so I wanted to go back and like read them in order and get her entire list of mysteries so that was one of my goals i think for 2020 and i i never started and the mysterious affair of styles is one of the books on my backlist i have the audiobook for that i'm going to listen to the audiobook for that i'm going to read this physically and we'll see how far we get 
today. Hello friends, it is Sunday, happy Sunday. Um, I don't remember when I last spoke to you, but I feel like it's been a while. Um, the last thing I updated you on was the fact that I was gonna start this and start Chosen Ones by Veronica Roth. I successfully read this all in one day. Um, this is The Mysterious Affair, Affair at Styles, Agatha Christie's first Poirot novel. And I loved it. I mean, I could remember actually reading this one. So I had read this one in the past, probably as a teenager. Um, I didn't remember the solution though for the mystery, but I did remember the first time I read it thinking, well, it's obviously the doctor. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't the doctor. Um, but I loved, th this was probably one of the first books that I read by her. And I, I loved the introduction to Poirot and how eccentric he was because it kind of felt like um Sherlock Holmes but the thing about Sherlock Holmes is that he's actually eccentric right and our Poirot he does have some eccentricities but really it's just like old-timey British sensibilities you know like they're very straight-laced and like somebody could just die but they're like no we have to we have to keep it together and not show emotion <laughs> you know what I mean and so like because they're so like straight laced they're only eccentricities to them do you know what i mean i love the way he works i love his mind i love poirot is, is just one of the the greatest detectives of, of all time like it, that's the way it is um so i love i loved this i gave it five stars and despite my complicated feelings on on agatha christie as a human being and despite the um subtle or not so subtle racist undertones and uh the things that are said that characters say about foreigners and things like that despite all of that yet yeah, it has its problems it's a product of its time but i loved it i gave it five stars i love agatha christie i cannot wait or her novels anyway i love her mysteries and i cannot wait to continue on and continue on with the paro series i love how paro just insults people in in such such a nice smart way i just i love it and then it's taken me a bit longer to read chosen ones than i thought it would i don't know when i started this i can't remember now like today's sunday when did i start it thursday maybe was thursday the last time i talked to you i don't know but i'm still reading it i'm not done yet but i am uh right here so i'm very close to the end i started out loving this okay absolutely loving this then there was this twist well not really a twist but just like it went into in a direction that i wasn't expecting and used a trope or like plot device thing sci-fi thing that really excited me and i was like oh my god this i love this i love exploring this idea and i got really excited and i really got into it um it's definitely more of a quiet well yeah yeah i guess it is more of a quiet like introspect introspective type of story the emergence of magic magic has come to the modern world um, magic was discovered there are not people who can wield magic really like magic is not so prevalent in the world but it it does exist in small areas and these five kids were prophesized to be the chosen ones that would defeat the dark one the dark one came they defeated him it's 10 years later they're celebrating the 10 year anniversary of the defeat of the dark one and tragedy strikes and they learn that maybe the dark one had a much further reach than what they first imagined so that's kind of the premise we're working with and we're primarily following one of the five named sloan she is um she's having she's had a harder time adjusting to life post the dark one now that there seems to be relative peace and you know they don't have everything that they were trained for as kids it has now come to pass and what do you do with your life what do you do with yourself you know what i mean um and she is suffering from ptsd she has anxiety she is dealing with a lot after the repercussions of what she went through as a, a very young teenager you know did my kids just yell for me pretend i didn't hear um so yeah i like i like sloan as a main character because i can feel her perspective and i can feel the emotion and what she's going through i can understand it she's somewhat of an unlikable character but i love that in women i love to see like women who are maybe not the most likable they're real they're real people and the characters in here definitely feel like real people i love 
the the themes in here and the things that uh, Veronica Roth is trying to say. Well, I'm almost at the end, so we'll see after I finish it how I feel. And then after I finished The Mysterious Affair at Styles, I did pick up Unbirthday by Liz Braswell, and I am 106 pages in, so I'm right here. I'm loving this so far. So I, I love Alice in Wonderland retelling. Uh, it's one of my favorite stories ever. Can't wait to continue this. I'm actually listening to the audiobook. I don't know if I said that. That is where we are. I'm hoping to finish this today and I'll probably finish this tomorrow and talk about it in the next vlog. Hello friends, it's Monday. I didn't update you last night, but I did manage to finish Chosen Ones by Veronica Roth. And I gave it five stars. Um, I really enjoyed it. I think that this was such a powerful story. Sloan is a character I mentioned yesterday that you're either gonna love or hate. She's not meant to be a likable, char a likable character. She's very prickly, but I related to her so much. This is gonna sound weird, but I've always been really drawn to or connected to characters that just wanna burn the world down. Do you know what I mean? They've just been through so much. They've been through everything. And the only solution is just, fuck it, burn it all down. Total destruction. And I think that it's easy to, to feel that way um, when you've been through a lot in your life. And when you look around you and you see the state that the world is in and the way people treat other people and the way people are treated and you just, you just burn it all down, you know? Um, always drawn to a character that, that feels that way. I think that I also related to her because she was picked as a very young girl and told that she is the chosen one and the weight of the world was on her shoulders and she was prepared and trained to fight the dark one, the bad guy, and that was it. There was no what comes after. There was no how do I live now that I've completed my life's mission. and. And she even said in here, like, no one no one prepared me for after because they didn't think that I would make it there. I, this whole book just, like, completely resonated with me. I loved the main character. I loved the ending. I think it ended perfectly. I gave it five stars. I really enjoyed my time with this. This was great. I'm so glad that I read it. I should have read it a lot sooner. But honestly, I feel like this was the perfect time. I really do. This week was an amazing week. Not only did I finish five books, but I had one, two, three, five stars. No, one, two, three, four. Four five stars and one four star. Amazing week. Um, did not finish this, although I did make it halfway through. I'll be reading it in next week's vlog. But let's just go over everything that I read. So the first book that I finished was Fury Born by Claire Legrand, and I gave this a five out of five stars. Absolutely adored it. And then I read Traitor's Blade by Sebastian de Castell, five out of five stars. Absolutely adored it. I then read Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron, and I really enjoyed this one. I gave it a four out of five stars. And I read The Mysterious Affair at Styles by Agatha Christie, which I gave five out of five stars. And then of course, Chosen Ones, which was five out of five stars. So an amazing reading week. Um, very proud of this and I'm very excited for next week. I think that my, um, my book a day schedule plan is not going to work out. I'm five books behind and I don't see a way to catch up. And honestly, the whole point of like trying to read a book a day was so that I could get through as much of my backlist as possible. So like, let's not lose sight of what this is really about. It's getting through my backlist books. So I don't have to read a book a day, but I, I did want to read as much as possible. Anyway, that's the end of this vlog. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, talk to me down in the comments, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and I'll see you next week or in my next video. Bye guys.